Hey YouTube, it's Cello Ben. I'm sorry that it's been so long since I've put out a video, but I am excited to be back with this new little mini-series, I guess you could call it, The Audition Chronicles. Now that things are starting to open back up, it's time for this guy to hit the road and uh, start looking for orchestral positions. Um, anybody who's been down this road knows it's a tough road to travel, but um, I'm looking forward to gaining some valuable experience along the way and hopefully winning a position sooner rather than later. Um, to that end, uh, earlier this month I took my first professional audition actually in almost two years. Um, the first one I took originally was when I was in grad school and then I was going to take some shortly thereafter but I ended up not in the, in the fall because of just not feeling quite ready to leave where I was and go, go out on the audition circuit and then later because of COVID. But now that things are starting to open back up, it's audition time. I had one, like I said earlier this month, and I'm going to show you some clips from my journey. So let's find out. How far did I get in the process? Did I advance? Did I make the finals? Stick around to find out. And if you're not subscribed, I would love if you would hit the subscribe button so that you can see more Audition Chronicles coming up soon. As a matter of fact, got an audition mid next month and we'll be planning to make a similar video for that. We're starting off with this garbage bag, thanks to a tip of a friend of mine. And the cello, well, let's see. I actually don't know which is the best orientation for it. I'm gonna try putting it atop the instrument. Um, my friend gave me this idea not to throw away the cello, of course, but to wrap it in a garbage bag so that when you're on the plane, it can help to avoid some of those problems with changing humidity. Um, we'll see what it does. Um, I could be doing it wrong, I hope I'm not, but I'm gonna go put it in the case, and then I am going to sort of wind down for the evening, and I'm gonna to try to head to bed by 8.30 because I have a really early flight in the morning. So, I'll see you tomorrow morning. All right, it's about, um. 4.45 in the morning. I'm getting ready to leave for the airport. Um, it's probably too early for me to leave, but uh, I like to get there really early because I need to park um, and everything. But um, yeah, I will let you know when I get through security and get settled in the lounge. Like I said, I know it's probably too early to leave, but it's better early than late. So I'll see you soon. All right, I am in the lounge. Uh, gonna have myself a little breakfast. Um, I had a, a free pass to come here, so I figured I would take advantage of not having to pay for breakfast. So I'm gonna enjoy that, and then uh, a little bit later, make my way to the gate. Um, once I get there, I definitely wanna go to the gate agent and say, like, first of all, you know, normally I pre-board so that I don't get in everybody's way. Um, and then I think they might have to like put something in the computer about the fact that there's not going to be a person occupying the seat with the cello. So I need to make sure everything is squared away there because I really don't want any surprises that could prevent me from, you know, getting to where I need to go at when I need to go there. So uh, I'm going to eat and I'll see you when I'm on the plane. All right, we're on the plane, got the cello situated with my extender uh, as usual I'm one of the first people on the plane because I try to get get on there so that I'm not clogging everything up for other people um, and of course outside of the cabin crew I think I will be the last out because again it's an unwieldy thing to travel with this cello any cello I think um, so I'm just gonna have to try and be nice and patient gonna be a full flight I just hope people are good about safety and everything and uh, I'll see you when I get to my destination probably all right I'm in my final destination waiting for a lift to pick me up bring me to the hotel um, yeah 
uh, flights were, second flight was really quick and uh, looking forward to getting to my room. I'm not gonna start, definitely not gonna start practicing immediately, um, but uh, I will do some practice later. Maybe I'll take y'all on a little tour of that, but I'll see you when I'm back at the hotel. And phone ran out of storage. So switch to iPad, sorry about that. Uh, where's the camera here so I can actually look y'all in the eye? There it is, right there. Okay, cool. So I wanted to check and make sure the cello was okay after the flight. Took it out of the garbage bag that I put it in yesterday. By the way, something I don't know if I remember to mention about those garbage bags. I have two kinds in my apartment. I've got one like regular kind, and then I also have this one that has like Febreze infused into it. If you have something like that, do not use it for this because you do not want residue or Febreze or whatever getting on the cello, plain ones. Um, I don't know what it did for the cello yet because I haven't played it. I just plucked it. It's still in tune, so that's good. So time for a little R&R, &R, and then I'll catch you when it's practice time again. All right, so I've been warming up sort of off and on, just doing like some gentle practicing. Like I said, I've, I, I want to build that nice foundation. I'm doing a lot with just trying to get a really nice sound, really slow. I've got one of these big old uh, wooden mutes from back in the day on my cello. Um, I didn't have a suitable practice mute, so this is gonna have to do for now. Um, but I don't wanna disturb my neighbors at the hotel. rotation in the hand for that. is intonation because um, the better the intonation the better the sound is going to ring um, and I think that that sort of breeds better playing um, I'm gonna plan also to do uh, some metronome work I'm like I said I'm generally not trying to do much in terms of wood shedding tonight but I did change time zones today and I need to make sure my internal clock didn't do the same so especially for things like the Mendelssohn scared so uh, that's not the is actually there it's been rushing a lot and I think I just was because I wasn't thinking consciously about it discovered yesterday is a win-win when I found out about my rushing. It can be largely mitigated by really placing this E. Which helps with intonation too and just getting yourself set. to do there so I am going to be doing some of that and then um, I got a buddy who lives in the area who's coming over and for whom I'm going to be doing a little mock audition of the prelim stuff the prelim list is only five minutes long or so um, so that'll be quick enough and it'll give me some practice with with my I've been doing mock auditions with my mask on in preparation for for tomorrow and um, if I'm in the finals in preparation for Wednesday. Uh, so 
I'm gonna get back to work, but this was just a little bit of a sneak peek into what I've been up to this afternoon. And I will see you hmm, probably when I'm at the hall warming up for the audition. All right, I cleared out some space on my phone so I can record from here again, excellent. Um, I'm gonna leave for the hall in about five minutes. Um, I'm to check in at 8.30. It's about a 15 minute walk, um, but I wanna leave myself some buffer time for um, my knack for getting lost in even the simplest of situations. Um, so I'm going to, I mean, I'm just gonna hang out outside or whatever, walk around if I find it early, because um, they don't want people coming in early because of COVID. Um, so I'm gonna do that and I'll check back with you and give you a peek at some of my warm up uh, once they assign me a warm up room. All right, I'm in the warm up room. Um, been doing some slow work with a tuner, you know, some scales. Um, I think it's really good, especially when you have limited time to do scales in the key of the things that you're playing. But it feels good to play without my quasi practice mute on. Um, Another thing that's important in these is to not let the space phase you. It feels really good in this practice room. It definitely feels really good in my apartment, which is nice and boomy, but I don't know the stage that I'm gonna be playing on or the place. Um, so in case it's not a very live place and I feel like I'm not making sound, I need to try and put those feelings away and not pay attention to them. Um, especially because often it sounds way different in the hall than it does to you. Um, so I'm gonna do a little more warming up and I'll leave you here with me uh, as I do it. shifts and just trying to make sure intonation is really good today um but yeah it's um i'm feeling good i'm gonna do some more some more work and um i gotta turn this off because i want to use the metronome and tuner on my phone um and then i will let you know 
when I get the results from the first round, and I'll give a little wrap-up of how I think things went. I'll see you then. All right, I'm back at my hotel. I thought the audition went really, really well, um, and I was really happy with it. And so I was waiting around for results, hoping to advance, and no dice. Um, I'm afraid I did not advance. There was going to be a second prelim today. Well, there is going to be a second prelim today. Um, but I was not among the people who uh, passed the first round. So definitely disappointing, but, um, you know, you never know. Sometimes you'll feel really good about it and not advance. I know sometimes people feel really terrible about it and then they will advance, no problem. Um, so you never know. I'm gonna chalk this up to a learning experience and a, a little trip out west. And right now I'm looking into changing my flight to see if I can get back to Florida a little early. I will get in touch with you either when I'm on my way back or once I'm back in my apartment. All right, I am on the plane and headed for Miami. We'll be getting in very late tonight, a little before midnight local time. Uh, and then tomorrow morning or sometime tomorrow, I'll film a little wrap up for the situation. It's funny, I just, um, just pre-boarded uh, to get the cello situated and um, in some ways, I get like why you want to board early so that you can get like overhead space or whatever. But in general, it never seemed like that appealing of a prospect to me. I feel like the ultimate in first class travel should be like having a reserved overhead space and then getting to board absolutely last. Because as far as I'm concerned, the less time you can spend enclosed in a metal tube, the better. But maybe I'm unusual in that respect. Anyway, I've got an empty seat next to me, which I could not be happier about. And uh, I'll talk to y'all uh, at the wrap up. But for now, it's time to travel. So my original plan was to make this ending part of the video, like right after I got back from this audition. But what I wanted to do was wait for some comments because that's often a thing you can do with these auditions. Email somebody in the administration of the orchestra and say, hey, I would love uh, my comments if that's possible because these are expensive pursuits and a lot of work goes into them. You know, I, I think expenses for this trip, especially flying with the cello, were well over a thousand dollars. So I, even though I didn't get a job out of it, I want to get some, some knowledge out of it. Um, I've still not received my comments though. So I want to just go ahead and talk from my perspective about what I think happened and why I think I didn't advance. And I think the main reason is counting. Now I've, I, I think I have a, a very good sense of rhythm, especially when it comes to isolated rhythms, even complex ones. Um, I credit uh, really good training when I was in undergrad for that, but I think there was also a little bit of uh, hubris in there that contributed to me not having a strong rhythmic profile overall in some things. I think the most notable place is in Don Juan in the first page where I wasn't really steadily counting the interspersed pizzicato things that I had uh, and whatnot. So I think I need to be much more disciplined with the metronome, spend a lot more time with it. I've already been starting to do that in preparation for the next audition, but I think that's one of my big next steps. Um, then the other thing actually was the Bach. I thought it went quite well, but I played, uh, played a mock audition for a friend of mine who uh, told me that he thought that, again with the Bach, the rhythmic profile didn't necessarily make sense, like I wasn't playing it within, within a, a, a cohesive structure. So. Those are a couple of things that I want to work on. Obviously not everything was perfect. There were a few notes that were not perfectly in tune or that were, um, you know, maybe not the ideal sound quality I wanted. So that's also stuff to work on. But um, those are sort of more isolated things. And here I'm talking about the more, the more global things that are going on. Um, so those are my basic thoughts on the audition. I think I did get a lot of important takeaways for the one coming up. Um, so that's, that's basically what I have to say on this audition. I hope you've enjoyed this little chronicle video. 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments, please. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, I'd love if you left a like. If you didn't enjoy the video, um, yeah, you can leave a dislike. Uh, it's up to you. Um, but anyway, I will see you soon for another Audition Chronicles video. And in the meantime, if you are not yet a cellist and you want to become one, or you've recently started and you want to revisit some fundamentals or supplement the lessons that you're already taking, uh, go ahead and visit celloben.com slash course and it'll take you to my beginner cello course for adults. Um, I would love to see you there. And anyway, take good care and I will see you in the next video.